now we're going to be making a Photoshop action. So let's talk about where we start. We have our batch image opened. And the first thing we want to do is actually find our actions window, which is this little, this little guy right here with the triangle, like the play button on a VCR recorder. We want to build a new action. And I always like to build new actions in their own folder. And the reason is because that way you can export the folder and you can get that action later. They will be deleted off school computers if you forget to save it for yourself. So it makes it portable. So the first thing down here is to come down to the Create New Set button. So we click that and we can name our set. So we're going to call this uh, Personal Website so that we can build a variety of actions that will help us in the development of our site. I'm going to click OK. And then the next step is to simply click New Action. It's the same icon for a new layer. So we just click that. And we can name it. We can give it a color so that we can find it. And we can also give it a function key if it's something you're going to be using all the time. I don't need to do that. What we're just going to call this is Resize and Recolor. And we're The default what? Uh, you, being checked just means that they're usable. The okay. check is not going to play those actions. Okay. To play the action, you have to select it. But we can see, I'll tell you what these, this red check versus this white check means in a moment, and it's kind of interesting. So now that we've created this new action, it's going to automatically start recording. So we see our little red button is now on. What we can do from there is we can just start working on it and doing a lot of different stuff. But we want to think carefully about the order we do this. So the first thing I think that we should do is we should set it to RGB color mode because any web image should be in RGB. Sometimes if you upload them in CMYK, they get really weird. So we want to make sure that the mode is correct. Now when I go to image mode, it is already RGB color. So when I click that, nothing happens because nothing in the image changed. That's a problem because maybe some of the future images won't be RGB and we'll need that to change. So the way we can get around this is I'm going to stop the action, so I'm pausing it for a moment. I'm going to force convert it to be a CMYK image. I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to start recording again. Now that it's different, once I start recording the action again by clicking that button and I go to image mode and I click RGB, it's going to add that action. So sometimes you've got to outsmart the action to get it to work. So if something like maybe you know will be relevant to future images but not in this one, you may want to force it to be a condition to work or you may just want to use images, the, the image that's going to need the most editing and use that one first. So we've converted the mode. The next thing we're probably going to want to do is we're going to want to go to image size because we're going to want it to be a certain resolution and we're going to maybe want to resample it to a certain size. Now, 72 is fine, but because I want it to change, if I just click OK, nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to make it 70. Usually, I try to keep them around 100, so maybe I'll do 100. It's not really super important because when we export it, we'll change that again. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to change the image size. And now we will see image size also pops up in our action. The next step I like to do is the fit image command, or actually I like to sharpen. So let's actually sharpen the image, filter sharpen, which is command F. Da, da, da. All right, now the image is a little sharper. Uh, you can hit command F again and it will do the same action you just used twice. So I like to add two so I can check them on and off depending on what I'm actually applying this image to. Then file and under automate we have something called fit image I don't know if everyone's used this but if you use fit image should pop up in a second here you can set the maximum width and height and it will scale it proportionately if we had gone to image size and done that it would force that image size to be the size of every other image and this is a vertical image so it may make the it'll make the horizontal image into the vertical shape it'll stretch and skew everything and ruin it so instead we can set the parameters of the maximum width and height that we would like the image to be. I'm going to set it at 900. You can also check this button so it doesn't make it bigger. You, usually you're going to be working with large images and making them small in this case, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to zoom in here in a second. And doing things like zooming are, isn't going to do anything. Now the next thing is adding the watermark. So I'm actually just going to walk you through it, and if you need a reminder, I will show you again because it's a little bit 
finicky when you add the watermark. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the type tool. It's going to take a second to load here because my computer's running kind of slow because it's recording. But once we have our type tool initialized, we can type our content. <laughs> and so as this is working, I'll mention something that's going to be important. The names of the layers are important. And that is typically why when you're doing this, you will want to start with a JPEG because the JPEG is already flattened which means the layer will automatically be called background. If you have layers with different names and you select them, when you get to your action, it's going to try and find those layers with those names. So that can be important. So now I'm going to set my type. I'm going to make it white so it's visible. I can even add layer effects to it. I can change this type face. I'm going to make it uh, Lucida Bright. And then, then I can just click and I can start typing. So I'm going to type. Uh, I don't remember the keyboard command for actually um, the copyright symbol so we're not going to worry about it right this second but a little big so let's bring it down it's definitely on the large side uh, let's make it 14 so now we have a watermark it's not the best watermark but you could bring in a symbol like if you had a file that had a graphic you could do that as long as it could find it in the same place each time and then now that I'm finished typing if I click the move tool it's going to name the layer whatever this is. So we can either change the layer name if we need to or we can just leave that as it is. So we'll leave it as it is because I want my watermark to be the same every time. In a moment I'll show you how to make it so each image you could type in a new watermark. So if you wanted the title to be on there it will pause the action each time to let you add the title. Right now we're just gonna let that be as it is. So I want this to be in the center of every image and they all may be different sizes. So the way to do that is to select both layers we can see select layer background just happened here. And then up here, we should see our align controls. So I'm going to align to vertical center, and I'm going to align to horizontal center. And it didn't look like anything really happened on that one. Oh, actually it did. So align, align. And then I'm done with that. So I can just deselect, and we're fine. So now let's say that my image is pretty much ready. We've sharpened it. We've got the color right. We've got the image size right. Now it's time to export it for web and close it. So we go to File, Export, or here we go. We're Save for web. That's actually what I'm trying to do. It is an export command, but it's save for web. So we hit Save for web, and we're going to see a box come up. And typically, you'll see it kind of like this. And what this does is it's letting you select different quality ranges so you can try and make it the smallest file size. We can see this one is going to be the smallest, but the quality is a little low. This is the largest. It won't usually be that big, but usually I try and go for around the 75 quality. If you don't see these multiple options, um, you should be able to switch between the different views up here. So you can see original, optimized, two up, and four up. And I'm always in the four up view so that I have the opportunity to select the best quality. Then over here you can change what file it's going to be. So if you want transparency, like if it's going to be like a little logo with a transparent background, you're going to want to select a ping or a GIF, or in this case a JPEG is appropriate. Uh, leave the quality as it is. You could of course set your own parameter there. And then I just leave that as it is. You can have it convert to RGB here, so you actually don't need to add that into your action, but I do anyway. And you can, you know, adjust size and the percent. So there are a couple things you can add here. I prefer to do them on the front end, but there you go. And then you're going to click Save. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not ever just have it save on top of whatever it was because it will save it and then you'll never be able to undo it and it will overwrite the original file. So always save it to the desktop so that it's not going to overwrite the original file wherever that's located. That is so important. Um, you don't want to type in a name because if you type in one, every time it does this action, it's going to name it one and it's going to keep overwriting it. So leave the original name for now. There's a way to adjust that with grep in actions, but we're not going to talk about that. It's kind of complicated. So we're just going to click save. It's going to say some of the files already exist and that's because we did the action before. I'm actually going to replace it. And then the final thing I want to do is I want to close the image and I want to not save it because I don't want to ever overwrite my original file. I'm going to click don't save and then I'm going to stop the action. And that is the first action. So now let's test it with the batch and then we'll be done and I can show you a couple little other neat things you can do with it. So we've stopped recording, our action's finished, I'm just going to toggle it up. I'm going to click um, resize and recolor. I'm going to go to file, automate, batch. 
And because that was the last action I used, it's going to pop up automatically, but you could always toggle through the different folders and find it. And then we're going to choose a folder for it to pull the images from. So I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to grab batch practice and I'm going to click choose. And then you can, you can override some things, don't worry about it, as long as you have that and that selected. You can then click OK. And it might take a second to initialize, but once it starts going, this can run through 100 images faster than you can run through 5. So let it start cooking there, and it'll start going pretty quick. And especially these are large files. You can see these are at least 9 megabytes. They're not huge, but they're large, so they take an extra second. And then it's going to start going faster and faster as it works. So we'll find that it should work on both the horizontal and the vertical images because we were careful to choose settings that would be that would work on both. Because just by centering it, it's going to automatically be where it needs to be. Oh, it is going to go a little slow today. Let's see. Faster. You can see it's starting to pick up a little bit of speed there. We can see them saving over right here on the desktop. And I think the video recording is what's slowing it down because normally this, this is like instantaneous almost. Sometimes if the action's not very complicated and the images are small, you don't even see it happen. It's just like it's done and then you got to go find it. So it's going quicker and quicker. We're starting to see some speed. We can see all of these things. If you actually toggle this down, you can usually watch it actually go through the different effects. But it's going so fast now, it's not letting me do it. So now that it's done, everything's closed, which is helpful because you don't want 80 windows open that you then have to hand close. Um, we can go right over here, and we should see all of our images. So if I hit the space bar, we can see we have a perfectly centered. They're all the same size, they're all RGB, and now all we have to do is rename them and drag them into our website, and that is how you create your first useful Photoshop action. So I'm going to 